All right, next part. Part D. Find Omar's position after 10 seconds and find the total distance Omar ran in 10 seconds. So we need to know what Omar's position after 10 seconds. Well, we do that by plugging in S at 10 and we get a value of negative 20 meters. So he's behind 20 meters or backwards or to the left, however you want to describe the direction. Now the thing is, to find the total distance Omar ran, you need to find the different distances he ran in the different directions. So for example, you need to find S at 0, which is 0, S at 2, S at 8, and S at 10. The reason why we need those values is understand that he starts at a certain position at time 0, and then he moves in one direction up to, uh, up to 2 seconds, then the other direction up to 8 seconds, and back the other direction after 10 seconds. So if we're looking at which direction he moved, we have S at 0, which is 0 meters, S at 10, which is negative 20 meters, and we plug in S at 2 and S at 8, we have the different meters that we already val uh, determined. So from 0 to 2, he traveled 0 to 44 meters. So that means he traveled 44 meters altogether. Then from 44 meters in one direction, he traveled backwards to 64 meters in the backwards direction. So a total distance of 108 meters. Then from negative 64, he traveled to negative 20 meters. So he m moved in a forwards direction of 44 meters. So in total, Omar traveled a total of 196 meters from 0 to 10 seconds. All right, part F. Find Omar's acceler acceleration after 3 seconds. So, to find acceleration, you take the second derivative of the function, which is the first derivative of the velocity function, which turns out to be 16 minus 30. That means that the acceleration after uh, t seconds is 6t minus 30. Well, we plug in 3 seconds and find out that the value is going to be negative 12 meters per second squared. Since the velocity at 3 is less than 0 and the acceleration at 3 is less than 0, so how do we know that? Well, the velocity at 3, we found out in part in an earlier part that in the 3 second range it's less than 0 because it's traveling backwards and the acceleration is also negative so two negatives imply that Omar is speeding up his acceleration is at negative 12 meters per second squared but in terms of speeding up this comes from the velocity being negative and the acceleration being negative all right example number four let's look at how a position function of a car and it asks for what was the initial velocity of the car what was the was the car going faster at B or at C was the car going slowing down or speeding up at A B and C what happened between D and E and what happened at F this is an important thing important graph to understand is this is here is the position function of a car what is happening, what is the initial velocity of the car? The initial velocity of the car is you would have to find the derivative of this function at zero. What's happening at that point? And then you would be asked, what was the car going faster at B or at C? Well, if you look at it, the slope of the tangent at this point, this has a greater slope. So was the car going faster or slower at B or at C? Well, this, the velocity is faster here because the slope of the tangent is faster. Was the car slowing down or speeding up at A, B, and C? Well, we would have to determine the excel we would have to determine the velocity and the acceleration to know those values. We'll go over those in class. What happened between D and E and if we look here, what's the slope of the tangent at this level? The car probably stopped because the slope of the tangent is zero. That means the car has stopped. 
and therefore there is uh, zero velocity at between D and E is zero is equal to zero because the slope of the tangent is zero and finally what happened at F well what happened at F this is a position function he turned around and went back so the idea here is that he came back to his original position he stopped for a moment to turn and move the other direction so if we look at the slopes of the lines going in this direction it changes from the slopes of the lines in this direction all right, we will look at those, that question further in class. Let's go to the next one. In general, when we're looking at whether a car is speeding up or slowing down, we need to compare the velocity with the acceleration. If a, uh, in order for a car to be speeding up, you need to have positive velocity and positive acceleration or negative velocity and negative acceleration. What these mean is that if the velocity is positive here and the acceleration is positive, what you find out is the object is speeding up, going away from the origin. A negative negative means that it is still speeding up, but it's going towards the origin. The next part, velocity at t times the acceleration at t is less than zero. So that implies that the object is slowing down. It is slowing down because either the velocity is positive and the acceleration is negative, which means that it's slowing down but go going away from the origin. So the reason it's going away is remember that velocity implies direction as well. Next, if it's negative, and positive means that the velocity is negative and the acceleration is positive so again the combination of the two implies that it's slowing down that means that it's slowing down but it's moving towards the origin and again towards the origin this velocity implies whether it's moving away or towards the origin all right now the velocity at t times the acceleration at t if that is equal to zero, so velocity at t times acceleration at t is equal to zero, the speed at that point is constant. That's all it implies that the speed is constant. It's neither slowing down or speeding up. All right, example number five. Given a function s at t, you're to, uh, and this is the position function of a robot moving in meters for t seconds when is the robot slowing down or speeding up so we need to find the times at which the robot is slowing down or speeding up in this case we're looking at v at t we need to find the velocity at a certain value and we need to find the velocity when the velocity and we need the acceleration and once we do that what we can do is find when the velocity is equal to zero which will give us the points at which the object is stopped or have that instant moment that it stopped and what we can do with that is set the acceleration at zero because what that means is there's a change in acceleration so when the velocity is equal to zero, it's that instant moment that it stopped. Okay, so we're changing from positive tangent slopes to negative tangent slopes. And then when the acceleration is equal to zero, what we're looking at here is when the um, slopes of the slopes of the tangents also change. So the slopes of the slopes of the tangents change. So acceleration is changing. So we look at this. We find out that for when v of t is equal to 0, that t is equal to 3 or 9. And when acceleration is equal to 0, we're looking at t is equal to 6. So from that, we compare the different intervals, the velocity and the acceleration at the certain points. So for example, we check from 0 to 3. Then we check from 3 to 6. Then we check from 6 to 9, and again 9 to infinity. We have to check all of these values because something's happening at all of these values. When 
t is equal to 3, t is equal to 9. We know the velocity has some things going on. And the acceleration has some things going on when it's equal to 6. So we check values within these intervals to see what's happening with the velocity and the acceleration. Well, the velocity in the interval from 0 to 3, so I'm just going to pick a number, any number, and we find out that the velocity is going to be positive, negative, negative. The reason why is let's say we pick 1. Let's say for the sake of example we pick 1. 1 means that this will be positive, negative, negative. So that's where that plus, minus, minus comes from. What's the result in terms of the signs? Well, that will be positive. We check the acceleration for the same value 1, and you get positive here and negative here. So the result over here will be negative. The, well, if the velocity is positive and acceleration is negative, something happens. So let's check from 3 to 6. Let's pick a number. 3 to 6 would be 4. Plug in 4. Positive, negative, positive turns out to be negative. And then the acceleration, we check 4, and you get positive, negative, which turns out to be negative. Then we check the interval from 6 to 9, and you get positive, positive, negative, positive. So from 6 to 9, let's pick 7. Positive, negative, positive will give us a negative value. And from 6 to 9 over here, let's say pick 7. 6 is positive, sorry, and positive, which gives us a positive acceleration. And finally, from 9 to infinity, we pick a number. Let's say 10. This will be positive, 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 all positives, which gives us a result of positive. And then we pick 10 and plug it in here. We get positive, positive, which gives us positive. So as a result, whether it's speeding up or slowing down, we compare the velocity multiplied by the acceleration, and we find out the first one, it's slowing down. The second one, speeding up. Third one, slowing down. And the fourth one, speeding up. So down here, this is slowing down, speeding up, slowing down, speeding up. So now we can write our therefore statement. Therefore, it's slowing down on the interval from 0 to 3 and from 6 to 9. It's speeding up from 3 to 6 and from 9 to infinity. So if we were to even talk about whether it's moving towards the origin or away from the origin, this would mean that it's slowing down, moving away from the origin, speeding up, moving towards the origin, slowing down towards the origin, speeding up away from the origin. So it's just a way to kind of look at this and be able to understand it. All right, folks, that's the end. Take care.